In this learning module, we want to talk a little bit about knowing how and when to simplify and how and when to solve. There's one major difference, and that is you're going to have expressions and you're going to have equations. Expressions, the only thing that can be done to expressions is simplifying. Now in order to, to solve equations, you must simplify first and then you solve. Now the major physical difference that you're going to see is expressions do not have equal signs. Equations have equal signs. Now, let's see what they look like. An expression would be something like 2 times 3x minus 4. That's an expression. Notice there's no equal sign. There's no reason to try to solve. The only thing you can do is simplify. And the way that you would simplify this would be just to distribute the 2 to the 3x and the negative 4, and that's going to get rid of the parentheses. So we'll get positive 2 times a positive 3x and get a positive 6x, and a positive 2 times a negative 4, which gives me a negative 8. This expression has been simplified. Now, expressions are within equations. The only thing is equations have an equal sign. So let's do an example like that. Now an equation would look something similar, so let's use kind of the same thing except we'd have a number on the other side or a letter or, an, or another expression. So notice the difference here. No equal sign, equal sign. Now the first step of solving this equation is going to be very similar to the steps we used here in order to simplify. In order that we have to simplify first. So again we're going to distribute the 2 to the 3x and to the negative 4 and we're going to get 6x minus 8 and we're going to bring down the equal 16 because now since you've simplified now you have to solve. Now to solve means to get x right here all by itself and positive. So that means we need to move this negative 8 to the other side of the equation. The other side of the equation is split by the equal sign. He's the middle man. And we also want to get rid of this positive 6. But the first number you need to get rid of is the one that's furthest away from the x, which in this case is negative 8. The only way to cancel negative 8 from this side of the equation is to perform the opposite operation, which in this case would be plus 8. Now when solving equations, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, which in this case is on the left, you must do the same thing to the other side. So since I added 8 to the left in order to cancel it, I'm going to add 8 to the right. I'm going to bring down 6x and my equal sign. 16 plus 8 gives me 24. Now like I said, in order to solve this equation, x must be all by itself and positive. So the only way to get rid of the 6 is to do the opposite operation, which in this case, 6 is being multiplied by x. So the opposite of multiplication is division. I call this the divide and conquer. Okay? So in order to cancel the 6, we need to divide by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, which leaves x by itself. Again, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. So since I divided this side by 6, I need to divide this by side by 6, which is going to give me x equals 4. Now before we continue to simplify and solve these expressions and equations, Let's talk a little bit more about what makes up the expression and the equation. Expressions and equations have things called terms. Terms are either the product or quotient of a number and or variable. These can be whole numbers, fractions, any of those things. Now, terms are separated by 
plus and minus sign. So for example, say we have 3x squared plus 2x minus 7. In this case, we have three terms, 1, 2, 3, and they're being separated by your operation symbols, plus and minus. That's how you can count how many terms you have. Now, talking about terms, you can add and subtract terms. The only time you can add and subtract terms is if they're actually like terms, which means they have the same exact variable and exponent. So for example, if I wanted to know if 3x squared and 3x cubed were like terms, what would you tell me? 3x squared and 3x cubed are not like terms because they do not have the same variable, the same exponent. Although they do have the same variable, they do not have the same exponent. So in this case, we could not add or subtract these terms together. We would have to leave them separate. Now that you know that these are not like terms, let's look at some that are like terms. For instance, 4y and 5y. These are like terms because they both have the same variable with the same exponent. So basically what you're doing is combining the coefficients, which would be 4 and 5. Another example of like terms would be 3x squared and negative 5x squared. Even though they have, it has nothing to do with the fact that they're like terms. They're like terms because they have the same variable and the same exponent. So now, when you start trying to simplify expressions, and I'm going to write this example here, 4x minus 5 plus 2 bracket minus x. When you start simplifying these expressions, it's important to keep in mind what you've learned so far. How to multiply and divide positive and negative numbers, how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers, and when and how to combine like terms. So, now dealing with the order of operations, the first thing you need to do is go to the innermost set of brackets. I have parentheses here and I have brackets here. When it comes to the order of operations, you need to go to the innermost set first, which would be 4x minus 5. 4x minus 5, they are not like terms because 4 has an x and 5 doesn't. So since I, there's no math for me to do here, I need to move to the next thing, which is this 3. This 3 needs to get distributed to the 4x and the minus 5. To make sure I keep my work neat and organized, I'm just going to bring down everything else. I'm going to bring down the 2, bring down the brackets. 3 times 4x gives me 12x, and 3 times negative 5 gives me a negative 15. Again, because 3 is positive, 5 is negative, when you multiply them, you get a negative answer. I'm going to bring down the plus 2, the bracket, and the minus x. Now it comes time to simplifying. Here's that combined like term thing we were talking about before. You have 12x, negative 15, and positive 2. There is no other term here that has an x. So 12x is going to remain the same. But negative 15 and positive 2, these. So I want to combine them. Negative 15 plus 2 is going to give me a negative 13. And that's because 15 is negative, 2 is positive. We're going to subtract, get 13, and take the sign of the higher number. 15 is higher, so we get the negative sign. Bring down the minus x. Now, in order to get rid of these brackets, I need to distribute this 2 to the 12x and the negative 13. 2 times 12x gives me times negative 4x, and 2 times negative 13 gives me negative 26, and I'm just going to bring down the negative x. Now again, this is an expression. There's no equal sign, so there's no need to try to solve. Your job here only is to combine terms that are alike. So in this case, 24x and negative x are like terms. They both have an x with the same exponent. So a positive 24 and a negative, you can assume that that coefficient is 1. Where, since they're opposite signs, we're going to subtract and get 23x, the sign of the higher number bring down minus 26 and now this expression has been simplified completely. So far we have looked at how to so far we have looked at how to simplify expressions. 
Now we want to make sure we know how to solve equations. Now the thing about solving equations is you have to be able to simplify first. But in this case, let's look at a problem that involves e e fractions. In order to solve this equation, we need to first get all the numbers on one side of the equation and all the variables on the other. But since there's fractions, we want to do a step putting moving anything around in order to get rid of these fractions to make our life a little bit easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the entire equation. That means one-fifth x, two-thirds, and four. We're going to multiply the entire equation by a number that can cancel five and three out of the denominators. Sometimes the easiest way to figure out that number is to just multiply five times three. <clears throat> five times three gives me 15. So I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 15. So to give you a better idea of what's going to happen here, this, this 15 is going to get distributed to the 4, 2 thirds, and to the 1 fifth x. So let's write that out. We have 15 being multiplied by 1 fifth x plus 15 being multiplied by 2 thirds and 15 being multiplied by 4. So simply what I did was just rewrite the problem with the number 15 as a product to each term. So now what you want to do is you want to go through each term and simplify. In this case when you multiply by 15 you're multiplying it by another fraction. You want to make it look like a fraction by drawing it over 1. So now what you can do is simplify the 15 and the 5. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 15 3 times. Let's do the next one. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 15 5 times. 15 times 4, we're just going to do that multiplication out. So now let's rewrite the problem with our new numbers. Since I simplified 15 to 3, now when I multiply these fractions, I multiply the numerator times the numerator, which is 3 times 1, which is going to give me 3. 1 times 1, which is simply 1, and I don't need to write that because then I'm just going to bring down the x. Over here, 15 was simplified to 5. So instead of multiplying 15 times 2, I'm going to multiply 5 times 2 and get 10. <clears throat> If I draw the 15 over 1, you'll see that 1 times 1 gives me 1. I don't need to write that. And 15 times 4 gives me 60. Now I have an equation that's a little bit easier to solve since I got rid of the fractions. Now again, in order to solve equations, your job is to further remove the number that's furthest away from the x as possible. In this case, that number is 10. In order to move it to the other side of the equation, I need to perform the opposite operation. Since 10 is being added to the equation here, we want to subtract it so that it will cancel. And again, whatever you do to one side, you need to do to the other side. So on the left side, the tens cancel. I'm going to bring down 3x, bring down my equal sign, and I'm going to do the math here. 60 minus 10 is going to give me 50. Now, again, in order to solve for x, we need to get x by itself. That means we need to get rid of the 3. 3 and x are currently being multiplied. So in order to cancel the 3, we need to divide and conquer so the 3's cancel. Since I divided the left by 3, I need to divide the right by 3. And that leaves me with x equals 50 over 3. And we can leave the answer as an improper fraction, unless of course the problem actually says to change it to a mixed number. Now let's try to solve this equation. This equation has one difference that the other problems didn't have, and that is there's two variables. So in this case, we're going to solve for x. So we're going to treat y just like a regular number. It is a number, it's just a number that we don't know yet. So in order to solve for x, we need to get x by itself. And again, that means we need to get rid of the term that's furthest away from the x. And in this case, that's 3y. Since I want to remove this entire term to the other side, I want to do the opposite operation. Right now, 3y is being added to this equation. So in order to cancel it on the left side, I'm going to subtract it. 
and again here's my equal sign so I'm doing everything on both sides of the equal sign. Since I'm going to subtract it on the left, that side's going to cancel. I want to do the same thing on the right. So, the next thing you need to do is just bring down your negative 5x. Positive 3y and negative 3y cancel. Now you need to ask yourself, negative 9 minus 3y. These are not like terms. So you cannot combine them. So since you cannot combine them, you should just rewrite it. Minus 3y minus 9. Your objective is to get x by itself. That means I need to divide by negative 5 since negative 5 is being multiplied by x. Divide by negative 5. Now it's your job to understand that since you divide this side by negative 5, you need to divide the entire side by negative 5. It's going to cancel on the left. You'll be left with x equals. Now this is the tricky part. You want to make sure that you simplify your and also rewrite it so that both terms are divided by negative 5. So let's just rewrite it the way that I see it. Negative 3y divided by negative 5. Negative 9 divided by negative 5. Now what you should do here is simplify these signs. In learning module number 1 you learned that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So your final answer is going to look something like this. Since negative by negative is a positive, you're simply going to get 3y divided by 5. And you also have negative 9 divided by negative 5, which also gives you a positive. So this would be your final answer. Now, as you're taking the test, you're going to notice that they do write it a little bit differently. <coughs> You'll see it writ written something like this x equals, they'll put the 3 and a 5 together and basically what's happening is this numerator y is just getting pushed off to the side. It's still the same exact problem, it's just written a little bit differently. And this would be how the answer would look on your test.